I spent a long time and got pretty carried away talking about the letter of James in the sermon on Sunday, so I'm glad I have a second bite at the apple of the lessons from Sunday uh, because there is something important going on in the gospel and it would be easy to miss the irony of it. Jesus has just announced to his followers the most important thing he will ever tell them, the whole point of his life and his mission, how all of this is going to turn out. And yet, what do they do? They end up, as we find out, arguing among themselves about trivia. Who is the greatest among them? This thing that is is the revelation of God's entire purpose in the life of Jesus. And all they can do is go back to whatever they were arguing about before he ever said it. This is an important thing for us to think about because it tells us a lot about what it means to be a follower of Jesus and what we should be looking for in ourselves as we try to be faithful in doing that. The first important thing that I think we should take away and meditate on is how far beyond our imagining the purposes of God and the plans of God for us and for the universe are. We're told these things over and over again. You may know, through the, through the gospel, through everything we, we, we live in our lives as Christians, these messages are passed to us. We hear the whispering of the Holy Spirit constantly. At some point, of course, the whispering becomes a shout, as it does in this little lesson we hear this morning, where finally Jesus says, frankly and openly, exactly what it is that these people who have been following him around should have begun to figure out about him over the course of that time. And yet somehow their imagination just isn't quite enough. And we shouldn't leave it at that and and be patronizing. Ours isn't either. How many times have we been struck in the face finally by what it was God wanted us to do only to discover that the, the, the impulse to do it had been there for a long time? Somehow those whisperings go on and on. And if they were unable to see it with the incarnate Son of God standing right there talking to them, why should we imagine that we would be any different? A second thing that is particularly me preaching to myself as much as to anyone else is how easy it is once we hear the message and really know what the message is to then go back into the trivia of life. How easy it is to say, okay, well, I don't really understand that. I really can't do that. That's really threatening. I can't imagine that. I couldn't possibly have any part in that. Let me go back to whatever I was doing before. This trash can needs to be emptied. There are days when I have to tell Cana I am going to an undisclosed location to concentrate on something. Because when I come to the office, it's just too easy to get caught trapped, I began to say, in all of the little details of making the place work. I can always distract myself. And that's where I have to be honest. It isn't necessarily about those things bearing in on me all the time and demanding my attention. It's me going and looking for them. Anybody who has a PhD will know that by tradition, your house is never cleaner than when you are writing your doctoral dissertation. Because it's so much easier to do those things than it is to confront the big thing. And yet Jesus will not allow his followers then to duck it and he will not allow us to duck it now either. He comes back and says, what were you doing? Who were you? What were you talking about? He knew. And he lays it out for them one more time. What humility will mean in this case what the fullness of this message is, and giving us a hint about how we're supposed to deal with it. And in fact, he's telling them and telling us, yes, I understand this is too big for you to carry alone. This is too big for you to carry in any way that you can imagine. It's only by being truly humble, by submitting oneself to God, as it says in the letter of James, that we're able even to hear it let alone to respond to it in any meaningful way. So here, dear friends, is perhaps in the end a message of hope for you and for me who cannot even imagine what it is God intends. We have only to be like children in the presence of God 
full of wonder and hope and every possibility being open to us and yet also full of a, an awareness of how little we actually can do without the full assistance of God, without the presence of God, without the grace and mercy of God. So, don't go back to the trivia. Sit with the big message just for a minute. Let it sink in and then see where the imagination, the grace, the power of God will take it and us. It has to be good. Amen.